Okay. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome back for week four of our genealogy series. This is going to be Identifying Your Catholic Ancestors Genealogy Workshop Series Session 4, Archdiocesan Indices and Digital Resources. So today we'll be covering, with the help of Kimberly, Katie, and Heather, various indices and digital resources that you can use to look at both archdiocesan records and cemetery records. Let's go ahead and get started with some housekeeping. Okay, welcome, welcome, welcome. As you guys may know by now, this is a great, this is a six week collaboration between the City Archives and Special Collections at New Orleans Public Library. That's my agency the Office of Archives and Records at the Archdiocese of New Orleans, that is Katie and Kimberly's agency, and then New Orleans Catholic Cemeteries, or NOCC, and that is Heather Veneziano's uh, agency. Today we're going to explore available indices and digital resources offered by the Office of Archives and Records of the Archdiocese of New Orleans and New Orleans Catholic Cemeteries. Okay, housekeeping time. Please make a note of any questions you have during the presentation and reserve them until the end. We'll open the chat function at that time. I'll let you all know when it opens and you can type your questions into chat and I will read as many as I can by 1215. We will address content that is presented today only. If your question pertains to a future presentation, either save it and come to the future presentation, or if you want, watch the recording again, or email us. We'll have our email information up at the end of the video. Okay, and yes, back to recordings. Recordings of each session will be made available on the programs and presentations page at archives.nolalibrary.org on the Tuesday following each presentation. So don't worry if you can't write as fast as you want to today. You don't have to scramble to get everything written down. We will put up the slides and the recording of the presentation on Tuesday. Now, just a little note, we don't put the slides up beforehand because for the same reason that we don't put the recordings up beforehand, we haven't aired it yet. This is going to be an example of the website. This is archives.nolalibrary.org. That is the city archives website. As you can see here, once you go to nola, archives.nolalibrary.org, the link is right in the new at the archives section right at the top. You'll see identifying your Catholic ancestors fall 2020 genealogy series. When you click on that, you'll come to our program hub page. You'll find supplemental resources for each week. You'll find links to the YouTube videos for the sessions that have already aired. You'll find links to the websites and you'll find links to the City Archives YouTube channel, which if you would like to, please uh, like and subscribe. <laughs> And um, we're going to be putting as much of our digital programming as we go forward in this new sort of space up there as we do it. So let me introduce us all. So today we'll be hearing from Kimberly Johnson. She is a senior processing archivist, records analyst for the Office of Archives and Records at the Archdiocese of New Orleans, where she helps manage conservation and preservation of historic and current records. She holds a master's of arts in history and is a certified archivist. Hi, Kim. Hey, everybody. And then we are also joined by Heather Veneziano. She is the director of public engagement and development at New Orleans Catholic Cemeteries as well as an architectural historian and cultural heritage advisor with the preservation firm of Gambrel and Peak. She holds a master's of fine art and a master's of preservation studies. Hey, Heather. Hi. And then we have Katie Vest. She is the research archivist for the Office of Archives and Records at the Archdiocese of New Orleans. In addition, she researches and translates genealogy requests in French, Spanish, Italian, and German. She holds a Master's of Arts in History with an emphasis in public history, and she too is a certified archivist. Hey, Katie. Hey. And lastly, there's me. I'm Amanda Fallis. I am a librarian and archivist with the New Orleans City Archives and Special Collections at New Orleans Public Library, where I work with genealogical and municipal government records. I hold a Master's of Library and Information Science, and I too am a certified archivist. Okay. 
so with all that said, uh, let us begin today's session. We will be starting with Kimberly. Hi everyone, thank you for attending today's session. I'm Kimberly Johnson, Senior Processing Archivist at the Archdiocese of New Orleans. Today we're going to be talking about digital resources that are available to you on our website. We will discuss how to access and use our published indices and our online scans of original sacramental books. The purpose of the Archdiocese New Orleans Sacramental Record Series is to provide detailed index to the sacramental records housed at the Archdiocesan Archives. These indices include baptisms, marriages, and funerals that were recorded between 1718 and 1831. These volumes are intended to assist those who seek information from the archives of the Archdiocese of New Orleans concerning their ancestors. The books are a complete index of all surnames found between 1718 and 1831. <clears throat> Let's chat about how to access the indices on our website. First, go to our website, which is listed in the title of this slide. Then you go to the genealogy section pictured on the left. Now look for, click here for the indices of all churches from 1718 to 1831, shown in the middle image. It will bring you to the pictured page on the right, on which you can open PDFs for volumes one through 11. The remaining eight indices can be purchased. There is an order form on, our, on that page, that, <clears throat> I'm sorry, or they can be accessed at local libraries and universities. The picture on the left outlines abbreviations and symbols used throughout each book. These symbols and abbreviations are key to understanding the entries and their full meaning. Please note that some volumes have additional symbols and or abbreviations, so make sure to check this page in the book that you are working with and do not assume that what was used in one book is the exact same in subsequent books. The picture on the right is a summary of existing sacramental records. There are significant gaps in the early Catholic New Orleans records from colonial Louisiana. You can get additional information on these gaps from books held by the Office of Archives and Records document that can be found on the library's programming page or on our website. The summary of existing sacramental records page in the indices are helpful in determining if there are records for the year and sacrament you are looking for, or if that book was destroyed in one of the fires in the late 1700s. The picture in the middle is what a typical page within the book series will look like. These are two entries found in volume two. Notice the at sign, which in this case means alternative form of name, often found in same entry. Both of, the last, both of these last names have three alternative spellings. Within these two examples, there are also two first name alternative spellings, as well as four last names with spelling variations. So when you receive a record with a spelling other than the one that you're familiar with, keep in mind <clears throat> Alternative spellings are common within our records. The certificates we provide are an exact and true representation of what, a rec of what is recorded in the register. It is the policy of our office to make no changes to records of deceased persons. Historical records remain as written during the time of the sacramental event. This is an entry for a baptism. This entry provides the researcher detailed information on the military position of the father. It also lists the maternal and paternal grandparents. Lastly, it includes the godfather or sponsor, according to the abbreviations page, who was the chaplain of the Royal Hospital, but omits the godmother. The citation informs the researcher that the baptism was recorded in the St. Louis Cathedral baptism book on page 407. When looking at the citation, you will see the letter and number B11. This part of the citation was created to assist the archivist when looking for a record. This is a marriage entry. For marriages, each party has a separate entry. The top entry is for the groom. It includes his parents' names, native city and diocese of that area, name of wife, date of marriage, witnesses and where they are from, as well as 
as a citation of location of the record within the sacramental books. This entry is from the St. Louis Cathedral marriage book from page 111. The bottom entry is for the bride. It includes her name, the name of, the, of her deceased father, her mother, her mother's husband, where her mother and stepfather are residents of, and her husband's name and date of marriage. As you can see, there is much to be gleaned from these entries. Even without seeing the original record or requesting a certificate, you can acquire a trove of information from just the index entries in some cases. You can also access the scan of this baptism to get even more information. This is a funeral entry in the index. It excludes the name of the deceased parents, but it gives information on where he was a native of. The original entry is located in the St. Louis funeral book, St. Louis Cathedral funeral book on page 99. When these indices were being collated, the creators decided that only those records with a decipherable surname would be included. Some registers are deteriorated and surnames are completely lost, illegible, or have complete pages missing. Other entries where no surname is given were also excluded from these indices. Excluded entries include anonymous adults who were buried in New Orleans, the enslaved and free persons of color without last names listed, and unnamed children. Now, if you're wondering how to get those last eight volumes of the indices, or you want an almost complete set to give to someone that is working on growing their family tree, here is what you need to do. As discussed earlier, to access scans, you will need to go to the genealogy section of our website and find, click here for indices of all churches in 1718 through 1831. Scroll to the bottom of the digitized indices and you will see that there is a book order form. Please know it takes four to six weeks for delivery. And now Katie Vest will talk about the scans of original sacramental books and how to access them. Hello everyone, it's good to see y'all again. As Kimberly mentioned, my name is Katie Vest. I'm the research archivist at the Archdiocese of New Orleans. For this next part of the session, I will be talking about the scans of the original sacramental books that are available on our website. Throughout the next few slides, I will be discussing how the sacramental book scans can be of use to you and how you can access them. Currently, we have scans available between 1718 and 1850-ish. I say ish because not all of our books span the same years, so not, of all, not all of our scan, or sorry, and all of our scans are made from those books. The scans that we upload are the ones that fit within the time range that we have designated. 1718 to 1815. This is why some scans end in 1796 or 1817. The scans on our website include St. Louis Cathedral, Royal Military Hospital, St. Charles Borromeo in Destrehan, St. John the Baptist in Edgard, and St. Bernard in Galvestown. Always remember that there are gaps in our records. This includes gaps in our scans. The gaps can be because of fire, no scan was taken of the book, or they were lost to time. Later, we will discuss how you can use the information found in our published indices to help you locate an original entry within a scan. Sorry, y'all, I apologize. <laughs> My bad. But before we begin, let me show you how to access the scans on our website. First, you will need to go to our website, select genealogy, and then under would you like to do your own research, click access PDFs of original sacramental books. This will bring you to the list of all the books that are digitized on our website. Then you'll use the information you learned from the entry in the index to choose a scan. The image on the bottom right is an example of what the scan will look like. Now let's find your ancestors. We will look at some examples of scans of original books and go over how to use them in conjunction with the indices. Our first example is a funeral. At the top of this slide, you can see the entry from the index. This entry omits the first name of the infant, but provides the researcher with his last name his date of internment, 
and the citation of where to find his entry in the original record. As you can see, this entry is lacking in information, but since it provides us with a surname and a date of internment, we will be able to locate it, locate it in the scans. First, let's look at the information in the parentheses at the end of this entry. Here is what we can glean from it. It tells us the church in which the funeral was held, SLC, which stands for St. Louis Cathedral, if you didn't know that before. The book is notated as F1. Kimberly mentioned this earlier, but this is a code used by our office, not overly helpful to the general public. Lastly, it notates the page or act number, in this case, page 24. To access the scan of this record, you will need to go to the genealogy page on our website and locate the scans of the original sacramental books, which we talked about in the last slide. Once there, you will use the citation and date of internment provided to you in the index entry to choose the correct scan and page. When you're going through the scans, make sure to look at the top of the page to check the page numbers. Now, let's see what this record looks like in the scan. You found it. If you look at the star on your screen, this is the entry for the funeral of the infant La Sose. As you can see, there is some damage on the right side of the page, but the entry is legible. Just from the scan, you can see the date, that he was born from a legitimate marriage and possibly that he is buried in the parish. That last part of the entry is a little damaged. Please note that not all of our scans are easy to read. Most of them have seen more life than any of us and probably have been previously damaged by acidity, water, or just time. Now, let's go to the exact opposite of the last entry. Here you see a baptism entry from the index with a plethora of information. This entry provides you with a full name of the baptized child, the names of the parents, and it mentions that the father is a resident landowner of Santiago, Cuba, and that he was obligated to stay there for his business. It also states the birth and baptism dates and the sponsors who have plenty of information just to themselves. The information in the parentheses tells us that this baptism was recorded in the register of the St. Louis Cathedral and that it is on page 18. Next to the entry, you see the list of scanned books. When looking for the correct book, you will want to refer to the sacramental date. The child was baptized in 1809, so we will select St. Louis Cathedral, Baptism, 1809 to 1811, part one. When you get to the scans, you will want to look for page 18. Depending on the book, this entry could be on the front or back of the page. For this record, the entry we are looking for is on the back of page 18. Some records have page numbers on both sides of the pages, and others count the front and back of the page as one page number. On the right side of your screen, you see the scanned original entry for Jean Georges Eugenine Anea. If you can't tell, these are some of the older records, so they will not be perfect to look at. The damage you see here in the scan is damage caused by iron gall ink. This ink has been used for the last several centuries, and some formulations can be extremely corrosive to documents. The ink can render manuscripts and other documents illegible and inaccessible by causing loss of text, bleeding, fading, strike through, and acid migration. If the scan you are looking for is hard to read or legible, you can send a genealogical records request form in and the fee to receive a transcribed copy of the record. Hopefully with the use of the indices and the original scans, you will be able to locate the ancestors you are looking for. Now I will be passing it off to Heather Veneziano from the New Orleans Catholic Cemeteries to discuss their digital resources. Hello everyone, I'm Heather Veneziano, Director of Public Engagement and Development for New Orleans Catholic Cemeteries. During session three, we, well actually during session two, we briefly touched upon the burial search function found on the website of New Orleans Catholic Cemeteries, nolacatholiccemeteries.org. 
Today, we'll be learning about it a bit more and exploring various ways to utilize it. As stated in session two, the search function is not a comprehensive database of all individuals interred within our cemeteries. The information it contains was sourced from typed index, index cards housed within our main office. If the burial and interment was not on one of those cards, and the majority were not, then it was not included. However, it is a great starting point nonetheless. When starting, I recommend beginning with a broad search and then slowly narrowing it down. On the left, you can see the surname Landry has been populated into the search bar. And all cemeteries was chosen, yielding 345 results. Using obituary information covered in session, four, session three, you may be aware of the exact cemetery. If so, then you should select it from the drop-down box to narrow down the results. When clicking on the cemetery drop-down, you will see that all St. Louis's, St. Patrick's, St. Rock's, St. Vincent's, and St. Joseph's cemeteries are grouped together. The results will specify which cemetery within any individual grouping the interment is located in. Additionally, you may search by first and last name. However, I tend to avoid doing so because some results get filtered out that may contain the record that you are searching for. The burial search tool also provides us with a back root way to figuring out multiple individuals interred within the same tomb. When searching for a surname and scrolling down the list of results, you will most likely come across multiple individuals listed as being interred within a single tomb. Since the burial books only list by date of death, name, and cemetery, this is a nice way to glean some information not available through other means. Also on our website is the 360 virtual tour option. During the last few months, with many people unable to venture out to visit our cemeteries in person, this tool has become increasingly important. By going to the homepage of our website and going to the Our Cemeteries tab, a dropdown will appear that contains the 360 virtual tour option. It will bring you to this screen where you can select one of our 13 cemeteries. When selecting a cemetery, an image similar to the one on the left of the screen will appear. The tool works very similar to the street view function of Google Maps, which is, a wonder which is wonderful because though our cemeteries appear on Google Maps, you can only use the street view to navigate their bordering streets and not their interiors. By clicking on the white directional arrows at the bottom of the image, you are able to progress through the cemetery and wander around virtually. Clicking, holding, and moving your cursor also allows for different viewpoints, similar to when using the Google Street View function. The small aerial map in the upper left-hand corner of the screen can also be expanded. When it is, it will appear as shown on the right, in, right side image. Various plot points will show up that can be quickly navigated to by clicking on them. If you find a view that you would like to save or share, there are a number of different ways to do that. Buttons on the top right of the screen allow you to create a direct link of the view, email the link, or view the point in Google Maps, where it will appear in the greater context of the cemetery and the surrounding neighborhood. Okay, uh, moving on, I'm proud to present the first glimpse of an exciting new tool, which will be available to the public before the end of the year on the website of the Historic New Orleans Collection. Back in 2017, prior to joining the staff of New Orleans Catholic Cemeteries, I began a project working in the capacity of project manager in collaboration with the Historic New Orleans Collection, Save Our Cemeteries, Tulane School of Architecture, Preservation Studies Program, and Tulane Law School. The result of that project is the New Orleans Cemetery Database. The database has its roots in a large scale survey undertaken in the early 1980s. The survey focused on eight historic cemeteries within New Orleans. Volunteers photographed every tomb found within each cemetery and also transcribed all legible information present on closure tablets and headstones. In addition, they also recorded the then current condition of the tomb or grave. All of that data has been stored at the Historic New Orleans Collections Williams Research Center on Charter Street in the French Quarter, where it is available to the public via microfilm. In an effort to make it more accessible, we, we furthered an earlier effort to digitize the information. Student interns from the Ecole Nationale du Chartre 
in Paris and the University of Pennsylvania's Preservation Department, along with a long list of volunteers, tackled the massive task of transcribing all the index cards from the 1980 survey. We currently have the information for St. Louis Cemetery Number 1 and St. Louis Cemetery Number 2 nearly completed. We hope to continue the project to include the other six cemeteries from that survey, as well as additional surveys and cemetery-related documents and materials in the future as funding and time allow. So now for the fun stuff. Um, I'm going to walk you through a few of the function of, functions of the database so that when it does go live, you will be already familiar with some of them. On the home page, two options are available in order for you to begin your search. Today, we'll be looking at the advanced search, advanced and simple search option. By clicking on that button, you will be brought to a screen that will allow you to search by the name of the individual being memorialized or by physical tomb. It is important to note that the names within the database correspond and are sourced from those present on the closure tablets and headstones. It is not a burial database or an interment database. That being said, if the person did not have a tablet or marker, or if their tablet or marker has been lost to time, you will not be able to locate them within the database. However, since the survey dates to the 1980s, there are many examples of tablets that no longer exist today, which are included, allowing for many mysteries to be solved and many research brick walls to be toppled. Getting back to the functionality, here you may search by name. As with the burial search on our website, I suggest starting with the surname. As an example, as an example I have typed Landry here. The results that appear cover both Cemetery St. Louis I and St. Louis II. For this specific surname, there are 20 individuals listed within those two cemeteries. If I were looking for Eleanor Landry, the second um, individual listed, then I would click on the view more about this person. That takes me to her individual listing and includes a bunch of data points that were gleaned from her closure tablet. If I want to see where she was interred, then I would hit the view tomb button. Here we can see that her tomb was, is within St. Louis Cemetery Number 1, along with information regarding its condition in the 1980s and a list of all others included as memorialized on the tomb's tablets. By clicking on any name within the, left side pan within the right side panel, an individual listing for that person will appear, similar to the one we just saw, saw for Eleanor. At the bottom of the screen are scanned digital files of the original survey cards and the photographs associated with them. Each tomb within the survey has at least one corresponding photograph, though many have multiple. Most tombs are also associated with multiple survey cards. As you can see, the information on the cards was transcribed as seen by the surveyor. The surveyors, when they were in the cemetery, first wrote down all the information on notepads, and then the information from the notepads was typed onto the index cards. So this is the second um, version that you will see. The original languages of the tablet have not been altered. This example is in a combination of French and English and includes information on family relationships, such as Eleanor being the widow of Louis Bernard. Scrolling back up to the tomb page also allows for us to click the Map It button. This brings us to an aerial map of the cemetery in which the tomb in question is marked by a pinpoint in red. You may zoom in and out of the map in order to gain a better view of its location. Another way in which to begin your research is by starting at the map itself. On the home page of the website, there's a Maps tab at the top. Clicking on it will give you the option of viewing the aerial map of each cemetery. Also on that page are four maps provided by New Orleans Catholic Cemeteries. These maps in PDF form illustrate the numbering system, which differs from that used for the survey. By cross-referencing the maps, you will be able to locate the correct tomb number to reference when calling about a specific tomb. Each tomb in the two cemeteries, including all three squares of St. Louis Cemetery Number 2, are viewable on the map and include individual data points. By clicking on a data point, information about that tomb will appear on the left side of the screen, including the survey tomb number, name on the pediment when applicable, and a slight description. It will also display a live link that will bring you to the tomb's individual page, 
as we saw for the tomb of Eleanor Landry in a previous slide. This new and, new and dynamic tool is sure to help expedite cemetery research for the two cemeteries and help us to quickly and efficiently obtain a wide range of information. As a side note, I will be beginning a new survey of St. Louis Cemetery number two next month. With, we ultimately hope to make that publicly accessible as well. When the New Orleans Cemetery database is published, we will be announcing it through our social media and on our website, as well as through our newsletter, which I encourage you all to sign up for at the bottom of our homepage at nolacatholiccemeteries.org. And this should be available to the public before the end of the year. We're really excited about this partnership. Awesome. Thank you so much, Heather. I was excited to hear about this. Um, I hope you all like take this information. Of course, like I said, we'll be putting it up again. So when the database does launch, you all will be able to know how to navigate it. This is super great because this is probably uh, one of the first um, really online versions of something like this that New Orleans has seen. So we're really excited about it too. Thank you for the work you've done. Mm -hmm. So it looks like we have plenty of time for questions. I hope you all are getting ready to formulate some questions for us. So um, let's go over the question and chat guidelines before I open it up. S only submit questions via chat. Please keep it clear of conversations or crosstalk. Submit only one question per participant. Of course, once, you, uh, once we've gone through a lot of questions, maybe 20 or 30, feel free to submit another. Make sure your question pertains to the information presented today, or we could say the past, two present, or the past three presentations if you have additional questions about those. We will get to as many questions as we can by 1215. Who knows, maybe today we will get to all the questions. Be prepared for a long question and answer session, everybody. And please feel free to contact us if for some reason we don't get to your question today. Okay, that being said, let me open up the chat. The chat is now open for everybody to type questions in. And me, Heather, Kimberly, and Katie will field as many as we can. I will read them and whoever feels like it's the best question for them to answer can respond. Let's see here. Here we go. We have our first question. Heather, what are the other six cemeteries that will eventually be included in the database? Oh, Heather, you're muted. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I actually was just looking it up because I, um, I normally remember it, but right now with so much stuff in my brain, I believe it is St. Louis one and two, um, Lafayette one and two. I know for sure that those are four. Um, I think St. Joseph one and two, and I wanna say Carrollton one and two. Let me check and I will um, pop back in in a second to answer it properly because I don't wanna tell you the wrong information. Okay, just let us know when you're ready and, okay. and you can add it back in. Next question. Are there any digital resources for Metairie Cemetery in New Orleans? Unfortunately, not to my knowledge, not yet. Uh, your best bet is still at this juncture going to be findagrave.com. Okay, let's see. Next question. Where do I find a Catholic funeral record of 1915 for a person buried in St. Louis number three, Little Sisters of the Poor tomb? Yeah, this Kimberly. Yeah, the Office of Archives and Records holds the books for St. Louis number three until 1917. So you can use our genealogy request form if you're trying to get a certificate of um, a cemetery related certificate from that time period. And we have that linked on the program hub page and they also have it on their website. Let's see here. Next, how do you search for persons without a surname? Is there a book or publication that these persons are listed in? Um, unfortunately, no, there is not a book or publication. What we suggest is that if you do not, if you know like the year that they were born in or when the sacrament happened is to go through the scans and kind of do a page by page search for the record. And if it's after the scans, you can always contact us and we can um, let you know what your other options are to search for it. Okay. 
Who is the source for updating the names in a given tomb regarding St. Patrick's? There are only six names for my family, but I have records for 18 people in the same tomb. Does anybody know who? But that sounds like a title question. Mm -hmm. So who would they contact for title? Um, that would be our title clerk, uh, title clerk, Tracy Dillon. And you can call our main office at 504-596-3050. Sorry. Oh. Contact info. Here it is. <laughs> yep, right there. The phone number or email address. Um, you can address it to Tracy and then she'll be able to help you with that. Yeah, so that's the New Orleans Catholic cemeteries down there, just like she said in the bottom right corner on this screen. Here's our contact information, everybody. Okay, next question. Good morning, and thanks for this great information. How does one volunteer to help with one of these endeavors? Are we currently doing anything like that? At the end of all the sessions, I'm hoping to send out a mass email to everyone and then um, we could add you to our volunteer list and then when uh, when the opportunity does arise um, we will get in touch with you directly we'll have different fields for doing hands-on work um, doing archival research i'm not sure what the timeline is for any of these volunteer projects but we hope to definitely have them in the future so it would be great if you can get your name added to that list once we put it out yeah our goal is to push it through the zoom registration list is that right Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, so if you've registered for the Zoom, we have your email, and when it comes time, we'd like to press that through to you. So you should be able to get that email. Okay, next question. Are records for St. Vincent de Paul 1 and 2 on Piety Street located in the database? That is um, not one of our cemeteries. That's not a Catholic cemetery, even though it has the same name as one of our cemeteries. So St. Vincent de Paul on Sonyat Street is um, those two are our cemeteries, but um, St. Vincent de Paul on Piety is a privately owned cemetery. So I think that the public library has some of those internal records. We may have some indexing. I was going to say, if you could, Mr. Skiro, uh, email us. We're City Archives and Special Collections, New Orleans Public Library. Also, you would want to check Find a Grave, but go ahead and email us and I'll see what sort of resources we have on our page, which is archives.nolalibrary.org. Okay, next question. Are there future projects planned for surveying cemeteries, I believe is the question. Yeah, I'm gonna start the survey of St. Louis number two next month. So that um, is the next one we're gonna tackle. We're, it's part of a master plan that New Orleans Catholic, Catholic Cemeteries is putting together for that cemetery. So each individual tomb and grave will be surveyed and given a condition report photograph very similar to the 1980s survey so we hope to um, keep that momentum going and then eventually take the information gleaned from that survey and use it towards our preservation efforts within that cemetery Okay, we have another question about St. Vincent de Paul 1 and 2. I'm probably going to direct you to ask us the question, the city archives, but it is, do you know when the street was cut through St. Vincent de Paul 1 forming St. Vincent de Paul number 2? Um, Unless anybody knows that off the top of their head, I was going to say. I have the history of St. Vincent oh. de Paul on our website. Excellent. If you go to our website, I'm not sure if it contains that information or not. Um, okay. Let me see if I can quickly find it. Um, but I would take a look there. If the answer is not there, then yes, I would get in touch with the city archives and they might be able to help you with that information. But I believe it was very, it was fairly early on. And this is on the Nola Catholic Cemeteries.org website? Yes, under the Our Cemeteries tab, you can choose each of the cemeteries and at the bottom after the um, hours the gates are open, the directions, there is a history for each cemetery and it will have a few paragraphs detailing um, the history. I'm not, like I said, I'm not sure if we have when that street was cut through. I know we have the dates when the streets were cut through St. Louis 1 listed, but I'm not sure if we have them for the St. Vincent cemeteries. That yeah, would be harder that, to research. Yeah, probably we'll have to uh, think of some other sources, like possibly even newspaper articles or something to that effect that might have been newsworthy. Um, next question. 
I noticed that the Catholic cemetery has a Protestant section in your picture. Can you tell me about that? Yep. Um, at St. Louis Cemetery number one is the second oldest cemetery in New Orleans. It's the, it's the uh, oldest extant cemetery in New Orleans. Prior to that, we had St. Peter Street Cemetery. So at the time of its construction in 1789, that was the cemetery for the city. So if people outside of the Catholic faith died within New Orleans, there was a section set aside for their burial and interment. New Orleans Catholic Cemetery still welcomes individuals of all faith, faiths to be buried within our cemeteries. Now we no longer have separate sections, but if you're Protestant, Jewish, it doesn't really, we take whoever wants to be included within our cemeteries. Um, but at that time, they were placed, the burials and interments were placed outside of the sacred grant blessed ground of the Catholic cemetery portion of the cemetery. So once the Gerard Street Cemetery was created in 1826, a lot of those families reinterred, they transferred those bodies to that cemetery because that was a Protestant cemetery started by Christ Church. Um, but there are still a number of individuals um, still interred from the early period within that section. Okay. Um... Excellent, excellent info. Uh, next question, regarding sacramental books. Online scans end circa 1815, but is information later than 1815 available by direct query? I'm assuming that means by sending in a records request. Yeah, so you can, after 1815, you can send us a um, genealogical records request form um, in the fee of $12, and we can look into the record and see if we can locate it. Um, but unfortunately right now, no plans are to add it 1815, after 1815 scans to our um, website. Because the, the number of, of materials just explodes, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It grows a lot more in 1820 and then 18, it just keeps, just keeps going. Exponential growth. Yeah. Um, okay, next question. Where can... I find burial records for Lafayette Cemetery number one. So that's going to be us, I believe, right? Yeah, that's a city-owned cemetery. So we have limited Lafayette records. Um, I'm thinking, since I haven't seen more questions pop up, as soon as we get through these questions, we could maybe, uh, I could do a quick web tour for all of us of my website's burial section, and then I could show you how to get to NOLA Catholic Cemeteries and, and the archives of the Archdiocese request form. One thing I want to add about Lafayette One Cemetery, um, the, the uh, Louisiana Division and the city archives do have some material for that cemetery, but there's also a really fantastic website, uh, www.lafayettecemetery.number1. Just one. You can go to that one too. You could do that. Um, and that is an inventory and cross index to the plaques and tombs located within that cemetery, and it's a really fantastic resource. Okay, excellent. Well, well t I, and yes, I remember um, I actually referenced that uh, in a question earlier this week, but we'll take a look at that real quick too. Let's see here. Next. Um, we have, oh, what you're doing with the cemetery database is awesome. Great, thank you. Do you happen to know if other cemeteries around the nation are trying to do the same thing? Not to my knowledge, um, which was one of the points where it was really difficult for us because we had to kind of start from scratch. There wasn't really a model to work off of. UPenn, University of Pennsylvania, used to have the Dead Space website up, which was a survey that they did of St. Louis One. That, that has been since taken down. I know most of you have probably used that in the past and everyone loved it. I loved using it. So that was something that did exist for one of our cemeteries, but other parts of the country, I'm unaware of other databases similar to this one. If any of you know of any, I would love to hear about them. If you want to email me, I'm always collecting information like that. Um, and I would be really willing to work with other locales if they're interested in doing something similar. I'm happy to help walk them through the process of getting started. So if you live somewhere and you feel like they would benefit from something similar, like please give them my contact information. I'm happy to talk to them. Okay, and next, next question. In 1853, one of my relatives who was in the military is actually buried under H for the granddaughter's name 
versus his actual name, J.B. Minnie, with an M. No record can be found for him, but his name is listed secondary on the card since he died a year after his granddaughter. Is this common at the St. Louis Cemetery? Heather? From what records I've seen, I don't believe that it is a common practice, um, but I've, I'm not, I don't look at the burial books for that period. I guess that it depends. Often. Yeah, I guess it depends on how, <clears throat> how the name, the H name was spelled too. If it was like close to many um, to see, that could be a reason, but. Or is yeah, it strange. possibly even a handwriting thing? Because yeah. the M looked like an H to the interpreter? Well, in 1853 too, that's hard to say. The records are very gappy for, at least for our burial books for St. Louis 1 and 2. So that could be a reason why we can't locate a burial for him. Also, they're I'm saying sure. that it was secondary on the card. I'm not sure what yeah. card that she's talking about, but that could have been at any time, like messy handwriting of many could have turned into penny if that's what it ended up being. So there could mm -hmm. be like- Yeah, I'm not sure about the card either. Right. So I think okay. we need a little more information on that really to answer properly. Yeah. Um, we have a great tip. Uh, there is some information on Metadurie Cemetery on the U.S. Gen Web Archives site, which I believe we covered in my presentation in section two. Uh, session two. Uh, so if you just go to U.S. Gen Web Archives and go to Louisiana and New Orleans, you should be able to access that through that area. Find a grave also has a, a lot of information for Metairie Cemetery. It's a really well documented cemetery through Find a Grave. Let's see here. Okay. I am in a catch-22 situation. My husband's family immigrated in 1836 and several members died that year. Since they were new, we don't know what parish they went to mass in. When I asked for help finding the burial records, I was told that I needed the parish and approximate date of deaths. Can you help? Uh, I, there's only a couple churches from that time period, so um, it, it usually isn't impossible to to search all the churches from that time period, but I just contact us and then we can talk through your particular situation and see how we could help. Okay. Yeah. And um, feel free to refer to Cross. I refer them to us if they need to do city directory work or something. But as far as like burial records, I mean, there's only going to be, we are only going to have one cemetery for that time period. So mm -hmm. if that's, if that's what we're looking for, I mean, but what's more tricky is well, the two. Of death. St. Louis one and two. Oh, well, but there's still only one book. Oh yeah. One book. Mm -hmm. So yeah, just give us a, a, a call or an email and then we should be able to work through that with you. Great. Has this session been recorded for viewing at a later time? Yes, it is being recorded right now and it will be up on Tuesday along with the slides on our website archives.nolalibrary.org and the very first link at the top. Next question. Let's see here. Although the sacramental records are now online, is the archdiocese still selling the hardcover books through volume 19? And we covered that about halfway through. There's an order form that we showed a picture of. Um, you just go to the bottom, um, you go to that and print out the order form and mail it in. And then you can purchase any of the books that are not out of print um, through 19. Let's see. I'm a historian and a genealogist. How do I get access to both of the St. Louis cemeteries without a family pass or tour guide? Both of those cemeteries are currently closed and they're only open to families because of um, the pandemic. We had to close them because of the large volume of people visiting them. We weren't able to control social distancing measures the way that we should be able to. So at this point in time, no one is allowed, no tours are allowed in um, and no visitors outside of family. In the future, we hope to reopen them to a larger um, volume of people, but we're still working with the city to make sure that we do it in a safe manner. Um, so in the past, St. Louis too was open 
um, to the general public during regular operating hours. There, um, you did not need a pass or a tour guide to enter when it was open. So that one shouldn't be a problem. St. Louis one is closed to the general public. You can only enter with a family pass or a tour guide because of the um, vandalism that was occurring within that cemetery. Unfortunately, there's, we went through different options and there's really not a good solution other than keeping it closed. So it's a tough call, but right now both are closed. So it's not even really a, an option. Right. And as we all know, this is an ongoing and completely fluid situation. So we can't give a solid date about anything. Mm -hmm. Okay, next question. Thank you for all of the great information in your presentations. Thank you guys. Let's see here. I am so appreciative of this educational opportunity. After this educational series, do you have any future educational sessions or presentations planned after this one? Um, I can say the Louisiana Division will continue to work on programming. We'd like to have some up some additional stuff up in November. It will range the gamut. I think the next thing we have planned is actually a history of the cocktail type program, uh, possibly in November. Uh, we're, we're doing our best to work. We have a very small department as well. I think we all come from very small departments here, you know, departments of one to three. Um, where, you know, we also have to deal with a lot of other um, stuff, but we are doing our best to do Zoom programming, continuing. The best way to follow us is on Facebook. Um, the City Archives in particular is www.facebook.com slash LouDiv, L-O-U-D-I-V. That's short for our old, uh, our old kind of proper name, Louisiana Division. So that's facebook.com slash L-O-U-D-I-V. You can follow us there. You can also follow uh, NOLA Catholic Cemeteries on Facebook, which is, I forgot what the full is. NOLA Catholic Sem um, at, on Facebook. And we also hope to have future educational sessions. I just start, my role is a new one with New Orleans Catholic Cemeteries. I began last year in September. so. Prior to that, we didn't have a director of public engagement and development. So now that I am on the team, we are hoping to expand our educational programming and we hope to have more in the future as well. So if you follow, again, Facebook is also our number one resource putting on information, but we also have our newsletter that you can sign up for as well. Okay, let's see here. Next question. I know Valance Street Cemetery is not a Catholic cemetery. I have a relative who is listed as buried there, but I cannot find the tomb. Can you help? Um, I guess it depends. I, I am assuming this means that you have been there and looked, although I can't, being a city cemetery, those sometimes aren't open. I would say email us, the city archives, archivist at nolalibrary.org. Uh, with the full information on your query and like what you have done thus far that you cannot find the tomb. Um, we're going to take a look at our burial website. We have limited information on the city cemeteries, but we can try to figure something out. I don't, I can't guarantee that we will find your person, but we can look at other avenues if you don't mind emailing us. It might be that their tablet is no longer on it, which makes it very difficult. Right. The city cemetery location records are just like ours, it's very difficult to locate them in some of the older records. So that could be the case, but um, you might have some luck also if you wanna go over a little bit when you go to the other website, Amanda, the WPA index might have that person's name still listed on a tablet at that point. Yeah, which we have limited access to, but you could still, um, you know, since you know the cemetery, you could email us. Mm -hmm. Let's see here. Oh, I have to leave now and wanted to thank you ladies and your organization for this valuable information. I know Carol is no longer here, but thank you guys again. Next question. My ancestor's tomb in St. Louis number two, square three has been removed because of deterioration. Is there a way to erect a memorial? I don't know who is, was the owner. Yeah, if you wanna, um get in touch with our main office. You can talk to us and we will try to help you with that. And that's New Orleans Catholic Cemeteries. Let's see here, next. 
On the indices for cemeteries, only the names that are listed, oh, I think the question is only the names that are listed on the indices for the cemeteries, is it only the names that are listed on the tomb? I am looking for a burial of a person who died in 1848. The family tomb in Lafayette, number one, was built after his death. I'm trying to find where he is buried. He was Protestant member of Ger German Evangelical Church on Jackson Avenue. So that's Lafayette, number one. Um, we'll take a look at the burial records page here in a second. After he was most likely buried in the Gerard Street Cemetery. Yeah. I would say and that's why he, the transfer happened after his death. So after that cemetery was deconsecrated and removed, um, those individuals, the families were responsible for reinterring those remains. So it could be that that was his original interment and then they created the monument in Lafayette, number one, just as a guess. I'm not positive about that, but that would be my first guess. Okay. It, yeah, I get, well, that's, that's a possibility, yeah. Um, the Gerard Street transfer is kind of complicated because it was a very derelict cemetery at the time that it was closed and then the bodies were removed. So um, I can't speak to how well the location efforts were made, but I think they did do as much as they could to locate the uh, relatives of the people buried there. But if relatives weren't, didn't get the message or weren't there to claim the bodies, as I understand it, I'm not sure what happened to them. There were, they were transferred to um, two cemeteries. I think it's- It was Greenwood and- Greenwood uh, and then the one in Metairie for oh. the African-Americans. Um, were transferred to the one in Metairie, so. Right, but that was um, claimed bodies, right? Or Those were the unclaimed. unclaimed? Okay. The claimed bodies were, were transferred to whatever cemetery the family yeah. wished for them to be transferred to. I couldn't quite remember the entire story because it's, mm -hmm. it's a complicated. <laughs> taking apart a cemetery is always complicated. Yeah, no kidding. Um, who would I contact for burial records in the Masonic Cemetery? I'm actually not sure about that. Um, would you I would contact whatever lodge they belong to or whatever um, of the lodge organization. If you, if you had the direct lodge, I would contact them. If you have the larger organization, I would contact them. Sonic records are generally pretty good. But, but are, are, are generally accessible to the organization. Particularly yes, they them. generally hold them right. even now. They keep those records. OK. Gerard Street Cemetery, I thought, was transferred to St. John, which is part of Hope Mausoleum. You mentioned they are also in St. Louis One Protestant section. I'm confused. I think we literally just addressed that with what you said, Heather. I think, yeah, you're right that it's St. John and not Greenwood. Um, they're also in the Protestant One section. The St. Louis One Protestant section is older than the Gerard. So some, when the Gerard Street Cemetery was constructed in 1826 is when some of the families that had people buried in St. Louis I decided to move them in 1826 or a little bit afterwards from the Catholic cemetery into the Protestant cemetery. And then when Gerard Street was deconsecrated and taken down, um, then some of those individuals were removed to St. John in part of the Hope Mausoleum. So it's, some people might have been moved twice or three times. It gets complicated, but. Let's see here. Next question. How do we prove that we are a family to someone buried in St. Louis number one to gain access? That you would have to contact our title clerk, Tracy Dillon, like I said before, and our contact information is right here and she'll be able to walk you through the confirmation process. Let's see. Any thought to having a paying membership which would allow entry similar to owners, example, Friends of St. Louis number one? I would think not. This isn't something that they're a program they're trying to start during the pandemic. No, there's nothing like that right now. Um, we do have a Friends of New Orleans Catholic Cemeteries program, which um, for an individual, it's $35 a year. For a family or multiple individuals, it's $65 a year. And that um, you will get certain perks like private lectures and things like that that are members only but 
we do not have um, paying membership to enter the cemeteries. It's really, at the end of the day, the cemeteries are in use cemeteries. So our primary concern is making them accessible to the family members of those interred within them. Okay, our next question is how does one request a family pass, which we just addressed that they want to contact the title clerk. Is that correct at New Orleans Catholic cemeteries mm -hmm. uh, to determine what the burden of proof is necessary to get one of those and that's New Orleans Catholic cemeteries in the bottom left corner here. I mean bottom right corner of your screen here. Okay, let's see here. We've got a lot of thank yous here. Um, I am going to, let's see here, please consider, yes. Uh, that's great, let's see. Facebook page name again. That's facebook.com slash Lou Div, L-O-U-D-I-V for the city archives and facebook.com slash. NOLA Catholic Cemeteries for us. And let's see here. I have a great great grandfather buried in St. Vincent de Paul one. How can I best locate the tomb? So that brings us back to it's a private. No, that one, um, I would look at the, on the burial search page of our website on the bottom of that page, it says who to call for cemetery records. And depending on the date of his interment, it will tell you whether to contact us or the Office of Archives and Records. And if you're contacting them, you will fill out a genealogy request form. But we don't have any um, St. Vincent de Paul records. That's either going to oh, be don't... the main office or the St. The St. Patrick office has 72 to current. Okay, so take a look at that um, at the bottom of the burial search and you'll either contact our main office or the St. Patrick office. And the information to contact the St. Patrick office is on that form. Um, so you'll be able to call either one depending on the time period, but I'm assuming that it's an older time period. So that is probably um, it at our main office then. Okay, um, I do wanna plug that we will be doing more in-depth cemetery research at our session next weekend. So definitely if you have these kind of questions, return for that as well. Um, here, we'll try that. We'll try the Lou Div in a second, just a minute. Um, are there any records for the Irish who are reported to have died digging the new Basin Canal? St. Patrick's cemeteries were not established by the time the canal was finished. Um, if they were Catholic, they would have been buried in... <sighs> when was the canal finished? That's what I'm trying to think of right now. <laughs> I forget the date. Oh, my God. St. Patrick's wasn't, okay, thank you, thank you. Thank sir. you, Mike. 38, yes. <laughs> Send us an email with that if you have like their information and we can look to see, as we were talking about before, there's not, it would probably be built for Catholic cemeteries at that time, St. Louis one and two, Kimberly? Just one, well, one and two would have a mixed book for that yeah. time period. Or the bayou. But the thing oh, is the though, if they were, mm, yeah, okay, that's possible. So you could just call and then we can look into it and see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're not, now, if this is part of the question, they're not going to be noted as having died digging the canal. They're just going to be by name. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It could. So sometimes well, it does say cause of death that we have a lot of interesting no. causes of deaths that we come across. You can't search by cause of death. You can search. No, you can't. You so they would need to know that their names okay. and day, month, a year of death, if possible. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great, great. Okay, it looks like we have slowed down on the questions. Let's see if we can do a quick uh, tour of a couple of things. Let's first do facebook.com slash ludiv. Okay, this is us. It's facebook.com slash ludiv. This is the city archives. Louisiana Division slash City Archives, New Orleans Public Library. I'm not sure um, what, what the issue is, but type in what I typed in the bar just now. And we will do, which was just facebook.com slash Lou Div. And that brings you to us. Now let's go to NOLA Catholic Cemeteries real quick, which I, is NOLA Catholic Sim like your email, right? 
um, for our website. It's nolacatholiccemeteries.org. Oh, for your Facebook. Oh, for our Facebook is um, well, Nola Catholic Cemeteries. There we go. Here's NOLA Catholic Cemeteries Facebook. So that's facebook.com slash NOLA Catholic Cemeteries. So yes. Oh, I love this. I love this um, aerial shots of the graveyards. This is nice. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, let's go to, uh, let's just go to the program page really quick. And um, so that's going to be archives.nolalibrary.org. So just to show you all, oh gosh, um, can I? There we go. That's kind of visible, I hope. So here's our website. As you can see under new the archives, identifying your Catholic fall tw Catholic ancestors fall 2020 genealogy series. You click on that. This is our program hub page. We have links to both of y'all's websites. And then of course the full series description, register via Zoom, which if you're here, you've already done. Um, what again, links to both of y'all's websites, the YouTube channel for the recordings, and then a session by session um, grouping of information. For example, there are direct links for this session, session four to the burial record search, to New Orleans Catholic Cemetery's current burial record search and to the 360 virtual tour. Uh, the presentation slides and the video will be available after 10 six, so Tuesday. Um, let's see, and we also have a link directly to the publication order form. Um, if you want access to the, uh, the genealogy request form for the Archdiocese Office of Archives and Records, that's under session two. It's the session two materials genealogy request form. Let me go back to our main page here and I want to direct you if you scroll downward to the genealogy section where we have the guide to genealogical materials right here. Since we're focusing on burial, I'm going to click on burial records and this we have a tombstone index, but at this time, due to pandemic precautions, we can only do this remotely and you need to know the cemetery that you want us to look in. We can't look through all the cemeteries because it's, it's like something like 70 or 80 rolls of film. We, we need a cemetery to look for your person in. Um, we can do a couple requests at a time. You can email us. We're archivist at nolalibrary.org. But as you can see here, we have uh, Lafayette, we have some Lafayette, we have some St. Louis, but you guys are the definitive, the definitive holders of that information. We have some St. Vincent de Paul and St. Patrick. Um, we do have some Masonic Lodge, it looks like, if it's this, if it's the, this Masonic Lodge. So um, if you can specify the lady with the question about the Masonic Lodge, if you can specify that you want to look in that specific, uh, you want us to look in that specific role of the microfilm, you could email us your request. Mm -hmm. um, let's see here. But I just want to scroll through this. As you can see, we have various, we have differing amounts of info. I know we had a, um, a question about Lafayette, so I'll go to the section on Lafayette by doing Control F if you guys remember that from last session. So Lafayette Cemetery. What we have for Lafayette Cemetery, which please specify um, what you need, is some lot registers for limited amounts of time. These are not complete, they may have gaps. Same with some interment records. Please again, we will need a date and to look um, if you want us to look at those. And then um, there's some assorted, uh, you know, receipts for sales of lots, monthly reports of the sexton. But um, Heather or I, Heather mentioned this, I believe, the, La the Lafayette number one index, which is LafayetteCemetery1.com. Let's take a look at it. Before we do that, I just want to pop back in really quick because I forgot to answer the what other cemeteries are going to be included in the database. And, oh, yes. Um, before I forget again. So it's St. Louis one and two, which we already have, then it'll be Lafayette one and two, which the one that's what we're going to work on next. Um, St. Joseph one, St. Joseph two, Cypress Grove, Odd Fellows, and Greenwood. So eventually Greenwood will be, have a lot more records online because we will also include that. Okay, let's see here. Yeah, 
great, perfect. So as you can see here, this, this website, um, you can access cemetery information by family surname, you can search by date of death, you can search tombs and wall vaults by lot sequence by clicking on these. And to scan all tomb photos in a square, click, click the appropriate location. So this, this is a wonderful little website and we're very grateful that it exists. It's super helpful. Thank you, Fred Hatfield. Mm -hmm. Um, this has been of much use and it's excellent. So if you want to take a look, if you're, if you're confused about locations or having trouble finding somebody in Lafayette, definitely go to lafayettecemetery1.com. Um, I think we have a few more questions. Yes, yeah. I see that. I was going to say, let's get to those. Um, will the library be doing any future online programs on understanding DNA? That's something that we long-term are looking into, uh, Mrs. Montgomery. It's going to take us some time though. While we do have some people that um, we're, and we're all like learning more and more about the DNA programs and we have some information on it, uh, we do need to carefully formulate the programming and carefully relate it to our own records going forward. So that's something that we're probably looking at for 2021 more than anything, but we are beginning the germination period. Of course, being the city archives, we always do extensive research on anything we do to try to relate it back to records that we actually hold. Um, let's see here. Are some of the cemeteries microfilm a product of L of, oh, of the Church of Latter-day Saints Church? Are they available from Family Search affiliate libraries? Um, the cemetery microfilm, those tombstone indexes were done by the WPA. I think, I, you know, I honestly think they may have been. They may have been digitized. The roles, I can't honestly. I've not, you know, I don't find them on Family Search. Huh? I've never found them on Family Search. I, no, I haven't found them on Family Search, but I think they may have filmed them. Um, I don't know if the film has been digitized at all, however, because I don't know that they, I'm not sure what the issue might have been. So the answer is yes and no. They may have microfilmed it, but they don't own it, and I've never seen it on Family Search, as Heather said. Mm -hmm. So I doubt they are available from Family Search affiliate libraries now. Um, let's see here. Oh, and, and somebody else in, in, the, in the chat has posted, Legacy has some webinars coming up that deal with DNA, and there is a link to familyfreewebinars.com. Um, the next question is, what about St. Louis Cemetery number three? Will that one be done? For the database, do you mean? Um, it won't, it won't be added to the database because it was not included within the 1980 survey. So right now we're only working on those cemeteries I just listed that were in the 1980 survey. Um, we do have records of St. Louis three in our burial search function, and then you can get in touch with us for other internment records that are not listed on our burial search function. But, um, as far as the cemetery database, not at this time. Any contemporary surveys that happen of St. Louis III in the future, we hope to add, but there have not been historic surveys of that cemetery, so we don't have the data to put it in. Okay, next question. Where is Oddfellows? Where can you find info? info? As always, on findagrave.com, but as you can see here, um, if you have a specific name, we do have the WPA, we can look at the WPA uh, microfilm for Odd Fellows, um, us, us at the City Archives, if you email archivist at nolalibrary.org. Uh, and the cemetery itself is located at uh, 5055 Canal Street at the end of Canal Street. It's closed to the public because they're under, it's go undergoing massive restoration projects right now. So I believe you can enter if you have family interred within that cemetery, but it's been close to the general public for a number of years while the restoration work continues. And I'm not sure who handles the admission actually, so. I know who. If you are a family member, and I don't want to give out this information, but if you contact me and you are a family member of somebody interred within that cemetery, I can put you in touch with, with the people uh, to possibly gain access. Let's see here. Uh, and then uh, somebody has put a handy link to greenwoodnola.com, the Greenwood um, genealogy link. Let's, we can go to that right now, mm -hmm. which this is, this is um, 
And that also includes the Cypress Grove because they also oversee that cemetery as well, which is a nice resource. So this is a great resource as well. I would, I would take a look at this. That's greenwoodnola.com. Just go to greenwoodnola.com and you should be able to link to it because they have all the links over to the side here, but um, it's slash genealogy dash two. Thank you, S. Wes. Um, let's see here. Jefferson Parish Genealogical Society is reportedly doing a lecture series on DNA. Uh, the alleged hyperlink to the Archdiocese order form doesn't work and was supposed to be live. Let's see here. Is, is that on the program page, I guess we're talking about? I would assume so. Yeah, we will get that. If that is not working, we will get that corrected on Tuesday for sure. Well, that's the order. Oh, it's working. They were asking about the, um, oh, it is the book order form. Oh, session four. Okay, we will get that fixed on Tuesday then. Thank you for noticing. Now I understand. Okay, I will get that fixed when we get back on Tuesday. Uh, Baton Rouge's library has a genealogy class program that has classes on DNA. They have a whole course series with electives that cover every section of genealogy you can imagine. This is true and this is really awesome. They were offering in-person two-hour classes, but it has not resumed yet due to the pandemic. Um, I'm not sure about their status, but to get there, let's take a look. It's, their website is ebrpl.org. And the section that you're interested in, of course, is genealogy right here with the leaf. So they have wonderful resources. Um, check it out. They will obviously let you know if and when the programming resumes. Uh, you can see here under the classes offered tab. So as, 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 uh, Michelle said, yes, they are postponed until further notice, but you have annotated class guides, you have the genealogy course catalog, which is obviously defunct at the moment. But um, this is, uh, you at least have access to all these PDF guides here in the meantime. And a great little video class, video class right here. Let's see, look at book for DNA, the family tree guide to DNA test. Oh, okay, here's a, it's a book suggestion. Um, DNA, the Family Tree Guide to DNA Testing in Genetic Genealogy by Blaine T. Bettinger. Let's see here. Uh, Colleen Fitzpatrick, who is very active with the New Orleans, with the Orleans Gen Web group, is knowledgeable about both Nolan DNA. Okay, she might be a good person to consult. That would be great, yes. Um, if you have any contact information for her, please email me, um, archivist at nolalibrary.org. And then we have one last little bit of tid tidbit of advice. Uh, make sure if you want Blaine's book that you get the second edition. And he also has a Facebook group and other, other um, resources. So that being said, we have hit 1222. Um, I think we uh, covered a lot of great stuff today. It was fantastic. Uh, tune back in next week for uh, a full sort of cemetery, find how to go through the process of locating tubes, correct? That's what we're doing next week, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. And um, yeah, thank you all. Thank you all again. Thank you all for staying. Thank you all for hanging out with us and learning. This has been another wonderful session. Thank the three of you for uh, presenting again. It's always super educational and I love learning the new things that I learned too. <laughs> Okie doke. Well, thank you everybody. Have a good weekend. I will get everything corrected and uploaded Tuesday. And yeah, if you have any, you know, DNA advice, uh, we, we move slowly, but you know, we do want to do one someday. So feel free to in to message us the information anytime. Thank you. Thank you, Amanda. Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks, guys. Bye.